Acting President, I rise to contribute to this notice of motion and um, I can't help but reflect on what a contrast it is to go from a debate in this chamber on an actual bill as we had uh, just after, uh, as we resumed after the lunch break, uh, on my colleague Ms Sam Dunn's bill to an debating an actual political stunt. And it was quite extraordinary to hear others in this chamber call uh, an actual debate about a bill a stunt. Well, I just want to remind you, this is actually what a stunt is. Nevertheless, I rise to make a contribution um, uh, to this debate. I'm not going to join the Liberals in their ridiculous and over-the-top condemnation of the Andrews government. Yes, we have an election around the corner, but that doesn't mean we can't acknowledge when a government has actually done some good things. It is important to give credit where credit's due. And I would like to begin by talking about a few of these. And I'd remind uh, those on the opposite side of the chamber, you might not be used to this. You might not be used to an actual positive and visionary politic, but I would encourage you to just quieten down and listen, because you might learn a few things. Let's first talk about the Royal Commission into Family Violence. It was a significant and important moment for our state and our community. The government must be congratulated for its action in calling the Royal Commission and in accepting the recommendations from its report and providing significant amounts of funding to support addressing family violence. Ending the scourge of family violence is surely a matter that we can all agree on on all sides of this chamber. Furthermore, when a Labor government adopts and implements long-standing Greens policies, we celebrate and uh, their benefits for the community. When it comes to the climate, after a long and passionate community campaign supported by the Greens, Victoria now has its own renewable energy target to encourage the building of renewable energy and fracking is banned across Victoria. Furthermore, we have seen the oldest and most polluting power station in Australia finally close its doors. These are positive initiatives that go some way to addressing the crisis of climate change. They are not enough, but they are better than, than, than the climate change nine policies coming out of Canberra at the moment. Even the recent announcement on rooftop solar is remarkably similar to the policy the Greens took to, to the 2014 election. My predecessor, Greg Barber, spoke many, many times about the need for a scheme to help households get rooftop solar. Although, as my colleague Ellen Sandell has pointed out, renters and low-income people are left behind by the government in their policy announcement, but not by the Greens, because our policy will assist renters to access solar and to put solar panels on public housing and public schools. Other policies that the Greens have championed that have come to fruition in this parliament include the safe injecting room. We are so pleased the government finally found the courage to establish the first safe injecting room in Melbourne. Again, after a long campaign by the community, um, hurting from the ravages of drug use. Finally, there is an evidence-based health-focused drug response in Victoria, long overdue. Let's talk about political donations reform. Finally, finally, we can start the process of ridding our politics of the corrupting influence of corporate money. Despite the government just a year ago denying the need for political donations reform in Victoria, we now have strict limits on don donations to political parties and a more robust reporting regime. As I said at the time, the legislation is not perfect, but it is a significant step towards putting corporations back in their place and letting politics be redirected towards the interests of the community. Dying with dignity. The government facilitated a process to enable a vote on dying with dignity legislation to be drafted, debated and voted on with the consequences that Victorians now have the right to die with dignity if they so choose. The Greens, and in particular my former colleague Colleen Hartland, championed dying with dignity laws for years, along with many in our community. It was an example of the parliament enacting the will of the majority of the community on a difficult but important matter for all of us. Let's talk about rental reforms. Hopefully sometime this week, we will see the rental reform bill pass the parliament. The Greens have championed better rights for renters for years, seeing our attempts for reform voted down by the old parties. But in the last moments of this parliament, we may see renters finally get the protections and rights they should have. And we urge everyone here to support these overdue reforms. With all of that, imagine what could be achieved with the Greens in the balance of power. Not only would we would we hold the government to account, 
but so many more policies that look after people and protect the environment could be implemented. But that isn't to say the Labor government hasn't been a disappointment in other ways. And we just saw that demonstrated in the debate on the important bill my colleague presented this afternoon. Yesterday, I was present at a rally for redress for the stolen generations. It was heartbreaking hearing the stories of the stolen generations and the trauma they continue to live with. As my colleague Lydia Thorpe noted at the rally, Victoria remains the only state without a redress scheme. 20 ye 21 years after the Bringing Them Home report, this is a disgrace. The fact the government has started a treaty process does not and cannot excuse the lack of progress of redress for the stolen generation. This country refuses to come to terms with the past and every action of neglect, of evasion and of not taking responsibility only adds to the trauma and hurt we have inflicted on our First Nations people. While we absolutely welcome the beginning of the process of treaty, the government can't keep selling off Crown land that will inevitably form part of the treaty negotiations. They shouldn't be logging our forests either for this reason and so many more. Not only are Labor lo continuing to log our magnificent native forests, but Labor bought a mill so they are actually literally in the business of destroying the habitats of our native animals on the brink of extinction and putting the water catchment uh, for Melbourne at risk. We cannot keep logging our waterways and our ecosystems. We cannot keep driving animals to extinction, bringing our ecosystems to collapse. We cannot keep moving into our food bowls. This is a fundamental matter of the sustainability of this state. Labor still sees the environment as something separate from people, something to throw some money at if enough pressure is applied rather than understanding that we are a part of nature. We don't have anything if we don't have clean air, clean water, clean soils in which to grow our food, and that protecting our forests, our rivers and our waterways, our native plants and animals, goes to the very core of caring for this state of Victoria and its people. How else can you explain Labor's opposition to a container deposit scheme, a scheme designed to remove plastic from the environment? As we head towards the election, we see Labor treating climate change as a box to tick to cover a particular voter base, rather than the existential threat that it is. Being serious about addressing climate change means being serious about transitioning to 100% renewable energy as fast as possible, and it means keeping coal in the ground. It also means not building massive, unnecessary, polluting toll roads. The Westgate Tunnel and the Northeast Link are disastrous projects. The secret dodgy deals the Andrews government has done with Transurban shows how much this government is in, the thrall, is in thrall to big business at the expense of our community. The Melbourne Metro project is very welcome, but the Labor government has shown it can't be trusted given its embrace of these terrible toll road projects. What I cannot understand is how a Labor government is selling off public housing land when there are over 82,000 Victorians in urgent and dire need of safe and secure affordable housing. They couch policies in terms of social inclusionary housing, but it's everything but. Right across this state, they are selling our public housing land, our public parkland, and pulling the wool over the community's eyes. And we will not let that happen. And what we have in the Andrews Labor government is the biggest privatisation since Jeff Kennett. They can't look at a monopoly asset or service without flogging it off, despite all the evidence that privatisations are a bad deal for the community. Despite the experience of, Victorians, uh, the, of Victoria's out-of-control energy prices, unreliable public transport and the mess of TAFE, and despite most social democratic parties around the world recognising the mistakes of the past, this Labor government can't get enough of privatisation. There is nothing it won't do for a multinational corporation. It is even privatising our precious public spaces, letting Apple into Fed Square. Well, we Greens stand with the community when we say our state is not for sale. One of the most disappointing aspects of this Labor government has been its embrace of the law and order agenda of the right. Building new jails isn't something to be proud of. It is an admission of failure. Sitting here listening to Labor ministers boast about how many young people Labor have locked up makes me ill. 
This is a government that has sat by while division and hatred is sown in our communities under the guise of a law and order agenda because it too believes in the law and order agenda. It doesn't seem to care that its very own policies will end up hurting our First Nations people and our migrant communities. Just in the last couple of months, we have seen three pieces of, of legislation in this parliament brought on by the government, where only the Greens have stood up to the old parties and their simplistic and dangerous law and order agenda. Mandatory detention has been shown time and time again to lead to unjust outcomes, including the imprisonment of, un, of vulnerable people. The Greens were the only ones to oppose further increases in power under the guise of terrorism terrorism legislation our multicultural communities are very wary of. And now we have the anti-association organised crime laws extended to 14-year-olds, once again targeting and scapegoating our young people and our diverse communities. The community is not made safe by these sort of laws. Instead, we lose our humanity piece by piece when we facilitate the targeting of our communities through such laws, and that is what will happen. We will not be standing by and letting the coming election divide our community. We will not let you pit us against each other. We will not let you put your corporate friends first and the community and the environment last. It has been just under a year since I entered this parliament. Each one of us here occupies a privileged position and with that comes great responsibility. It has been a wonderful year and I have learned so much. People look to us for support and leadership, but sadly, all too often, what they see is cynical politicking and point scoring. We should all be looking for every opportunity to restore confidence and trust in our political system. Instead, we hear the heckles and taunts, we hear them, when we dare to speak about the critical issues that we are facing as a state as a country, as a planet. Climate change, poverty, inequality, human rights, caring for our environment. Oh, we're part of the universe. Where all things need to balance. We hear the heckling and taunting, as has been very present throughout this debate. You tell us to toughen up. Well, how about you all grow up and act with the integrity and respect this place deserves? I don't think political life should be seen as a career. It is your life's work in this place. And what do you want your legacy and life work to be? Will you watch and stand by as a planet burns, as you leave it uninhabitable for future generations? Will you let people continue to sleep on the streets because of homelessness? In one of the richest countries in the world, will you keep up whipping up hysteria and fear and pitting people against each other, leaving our young people to stare at a bleak future for themselves? Or will your legacy be one in which you did everything you could to care for our environment and care for our future generations? Can you honestly say that you did everything you could to leave this place in a better place than you inherited in? Will you help us achieve a fair go for all, a home, a safe and secure home for everyone, a community that each of us can connect to, a sense of a belonging, a justice for our First Nations and a safe and habitable climate for future generations to come.